we are in front of the SunPath 2007 rig. You can see all the gorgeous detail that's been put into this. Let's see what Bill Booth has to say about what new products are available today. Now, we have three things that happen when the RSL goes. The first thing it'll do is pull the ripcord pin. Okay. So as the RSL goes, it pulls the ripcord pin out. If you haven't broken away yet, yeah. all right, it will release the other side. Pull the pin. Pull the pin, releases the other side, all right, then loads here, okay, and pulls that little tab. This sets the hook. This is a fish hook with no barb. This sets the hook well, all right, and then it goes. Now it's a race. The pilot chute is trying to deploy the reserve. The main is trying to deploy the reserve and malfunction. So as long as you keep tension on this, the fish can't get away. But the second you lose tension, in other words, this starts pulling away faster, the connection to the main releases. And if you pull the reserve? Pull the reserve Suppose you immediately. Have a total yeah, total. So you pull the reserve. Pull the reserve. We'll pull the reserve for you here. Can I have your attention? I'm going to hook everything up. But There's a richer. This is in here like this, okay? Now this isn't coming out of the pocket because nothing happened. That's why we have that little safety tie on there, okay? So what happens when you pull the reserve is this. The reserve pilot chute goes and it disconnects. And it disconnects because Immediately, of no moving parts. The hook is facing one way, okay? Yeah. So yeah. it only connects if this is going faster than this. So it takes care of all malfunctions with no moving parts. It knows what's happening in a, a three hundredths of a second and makes a decision whether this or this wins. And in any chance, sometimes in bag locks, the main, which is a malfunction, is a bag lock with a pilot chute, starts pulling, frees the reserve pilot chute, which now doesn't have a five pound bag on it, and the reserve pilot chute halfway through beats it, and it disconnects. So at any point in the sequence, it can change its mind. It's a very smart little piece of metal. Yeah, yeah. I show video. Yeah. It's very fast. Yeah, very fast. So it means that when you break away in one half second, your reserve will be at line stretch, perfectly aligned with your body. And so you get the fastest possible reserve open. Nothing can be faster. If it pulled any harder, it would pull the bag off the reserve. Yeah. So we had to fix it. We found out that it pulls at about 120 pounds force, which is the same as a 36 inch pilot sheet at terminal. So that means on a breakaway, you get a deployment that's as fast as terminal, and you're not going that fast. So it's as soft as possible opening because you're at the slowest possible speed. Seen 50 feet, I don't guarantee anything below 100 feet. <coughs> but we have some videotapes of people breaking away at 100 feet and uh, living. Hopefully they volunteered. <laughs> so anyway, it's very, very fast. It's, been, um, it's on 5,000 rigs, about a million jumps have been made, probably as many as 1,600 actual emergency uses, plus 500 intentional uses. It's a little over 2,000 uses now. And they, every single one of them's worked. 2,000 in a row is pretty good testing, yeah. considering the TSO requires uh, eight. <laughs> eight, so we've got 2,000 versus eight. TSO testing is wholly inadequate when it gets down to a system like this. And of course, there are no tests in the TSO for it because it's new. So in 10 years, there will be TSO tests, I guess. <laughs> Very simple. And then show the other thing. Recoil ripcord of Spectra. <laughs> Which means, if your ripcord comes out of the pocket accidentally, it can't float. It always comes back. So, this is a ripcord with no metal except for the handle. <clears throat> and this is how it's done. We have a piece of bungee in the middle of it that gives it elasticity. And this ripcord can be inspected. <coughs> All I have to do is, is look at the bar tack. I don't have to worry, is that ball swedged on correctly? I don't have to worry. So, which, you know, it, can you inspect with your eye? That, or this little ball? And because Spectre is slippery, the pull force is 25% less. Especially when you pull at an angle, we've measured up to 80% less pull force to pull the reserve. Because this steel cable doesn't like coming around at a bad angle, but the Spectre doesn't mind it. It's also stronger. This is 1,000 pounds versus this ball is 600. So it's stronger, lighter. It costs 50 times less money to make. 50 times less money. It has lower pull force and it can't, uh, it can't float. So it has 
Um, I've had it in the Sigma mains as the thing, and you generally get a thousand actual pulls out of it before it starts to uh, get a little <coughs> shabby. But when it loses 40% of its strength, it's now equal to the traditional ripcord. Uh, the slice span should be infinite. We have put Spectra right here in roughly the same position as the static line, so we know it doesn't magically deteriorate. Your reserve closing loop is Spectra. Your slinks are now Spectra. Is it uh, a standard shock cord inside? It's a special shock cord. It has 150% stretch, and I only allow it to go to 100 so that I never load the shock cord to breakage. It limits, okay? So uh, you could take this and go a thousand times like that, and uh, it doesn't wear. One neat thing is because it's always under one pound of tension, you don't get any motion like this. It's always under a little tension, so everything stays, and there's no rubbing motions. Yeah. And we have 5,000 Sigmas with 10,000 of these housings on it, and not one housing has had a burr in it that's cut a Sigma main ripcord, so we trust the housings. But of course, soon we won't have metal housings at all. They're unnecessary. They're only necessary for steel ripcords. And I'm leaving them on because it shows that this ripcord goes in any rig with a housing in it. Yeah. It's one of those things we tested on mains for five years and now it's ready for reserves. Just like the Ram Air Reserve was tested as a main for five years before we put it in reserves. I don't want surprises. And I've actually had it here. I, I changed from, da from Dacron to Spectra 10 years ago anticipating this so I could see how Spectra worked in this position. So now I've been staring at Spectra for 10 years there and it doesn't magically deteriorate. And every breakaway done on a Sigma so far has been on this and the force is much higher than a human can pull and they don't break. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty thoroughly tested. So, from now on, it's going to be standard, and if you want a metal ripcord, you can pay the $25 more that it costs. All right, if you want to have a metal ripcord. Plus, this doesn't dent this right here, which is important if you have plastic covers here for students, no longer does it scar up the plastic cover because everything is so smooth now. You don't have this eye under here, which is tearing everything up. These eyes are $18, all right? This isn't 18 cents. You know, it's really a uh, good savings. Magnetic riser covers are the biggest story though, guys. They will actually, I believe, <laughs> save lives. We've had four people die since 2007 from opening shocks. On the same canopies we've been jumping for a long time. Something's changed and what's changed is that tuck tab riser covers have gotten extremely tough and hard to release because people want to do a lot of free flying and stuff.